And there's Peter Clark. I know him from. Oh my Wonder God! Are you oh a my God. That's so <laughs> Yeah, I met that guy in London. Great story. Oh yeah, you did. Sure. Yeah, at the Globe. At the Globe Theater. Absolutely. We stood. We stood yeah. right by the stage. Yes, I think we were groundlings. We could have gone on. Yep. Wouldn't have taken much, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would have been fun. It was still fun. I did, I did come back later on because a friend of mine was sort of in charge of the, the library or, the, or the, all the books that they had over there, and I went to visit him, and the, the theater was empty, completely. Oh. But he, allowed, he took me in and took me up on the stage, and the theater was completely empty, just me and a friend of mine. So I got to stand on the stage, and I did, I don't know, I think the opening chorus from Henry V or something. But uh, at least nobody was there, but at least I got to do something on the stage. <laughs> Put that on the resume, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely right, yeah. I did, I did send in, a, uh, a, 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 I wanted to audition, but I never heard back. Maybe it was because I stood on stage and did that <laughs> anyway, how are you doing, Richard? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm staying okay, safe. Good. I hope you guys are. Yeah. Have you, anybody had their shot yet? Yeah, I had mine. I'm, nope. I'm trying to get one. So. Okay. I'm trying not to get one. I'm not getting one. I'm not doing that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have yours. Is that what you're saying? All right. What part of California are you living in? Um, I live right outside of L.A., Woodland Hills. Oh, okay. Okay. Is that where you are now? Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, I thought you were here. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, I wouldn't mind that either, but uh, just for tonight, I'll be here. Um... How does this... Uh, I'm really so curious how you guys run this is it pretty straightforward somebody starts and then yeah are you guys reading a book or have you got it up in front of you somehow or well we usually okay. truth usually <laughs> has an option of putting it on the screen i usually i like to have a text in front of me so it's right in front of you now so i like to read off the, the script okay because i and found the script online so i'm assuming we're we're pretty close yeah. I'm still yeah. scrolling line. I'm scrolling. Half the screen has a script. I'm trying something different. I'm scrolling it. But I have my book for the backup just in case. So I we're doing Romeo and Juliet, right? No. Oh dear, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Are you I've been waiting my whole life to play Romeo, you guys. What happened? Oh, we had to catch it for Juliet. <laughs> no, we're doing Tony and the Shoe. Okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You'll get so, a chance later. No, yeah. well, we haven't reached that play yet. Yeah, stick with us. Happy to see you, though, Richard. Happy to see yeah, you. Yeah, good to see you too, Peter. I'm just wondering. Um, did we do? Were you in Midsummer Night's Dream for the Old World's Fair or not? Does that the awards did that? And yes. Yes, that's you right. it? Yeah, okay. uh, I was bottom. Well, I should remember that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Hawaiian version is I was Okole. <laughs> oh, well, now I like that even better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I, I did Othello at uh, Kumu, the only way they said we could do it is if we staged it in Hawaii. So they had, they said, well, what can we use? And they started to call, well, we could use Hale. Every time we'd go to the Hale, anytime they said house, we yeah. changed that word. And that, that was the permission to, you know, do it as a Hawaiian production. So, yeah, you played Iago in that. Yes, I did. And I, I can I saw that. I was there. Oh, so. yeah, that was wonderful. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Probably one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life is play that. Part. I don't blame you, man. I would have been nervous. <laughs> and I replaced that. somebody else. 
Oh, you did? Oh, geez. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I hope it wasn't Derek Jacoby, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was a great help to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's okay. So, are we waiting for Jim? Uh, we're waiting for Mike. Ruby. Mike. Oh, Mike. Mike and Ruby. Mike and Ruby, okay. Yeah, Jim's not going to be here. Did Una oh, respond yeah. at all? Is Una coming? I... Yeah, I don't know. I did not get a response from, like, everybody on that. Tried to fill it up oh, as best sorry. I could. You trimmed your beard a bit. Me? Good. Yeah. Yeah. I did the I did the cut down here, cut down here, so it was like the soul patch, right? And I yeah. did that on uh, uh January first, right? New Year's. Oh happy new year. Okay. It's like a, uh, it's getting all bushy and it's all white. And I'm like, this is too hemingway, yeah. right? So I did that and it just <laughs> doing my little videos and it just looked like general custer <laughs> yeah <laughs> so on my birthday i shaved that off go for the chin go okay. for the kalakawa <laughs> yeah <laughs> now you hey, i, I really thing. like your uh your background there i'm trying to imagine where i like it whatever it is i'm looking at oh thank you yeah, this is the corner of my room. Put one of them stones up there. This is a painting I did. It's just papaya, you know, um, papaya tree painting. Uh huh. Nice. Oh. Someone was telling me about the um, black velvet, you know, the black felt paintings. Yeah. I was talking to somebody in Texas about painting because I said, oh, I do paintings. And so they talked to me about the black felt paintings you know these like cheesy things you see <laughs> the tiger and the girl Arr! yeah and they're telling me about oh, you just no, paint no. the canvas black and then paint on top of it and it's great and so I'm like I'm gonna do that so I say oh, what do I do and I remember this papaya tree in the backyard one time and I'm like climbed it all the time so like oh papaya tree <laughs> nice Oh, thanks. It came out interesting. I got some other paintings, but they come out. I just yeah. have this thing about subject matter, so they're all kinds of yeah, crazy yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. Tim's not coming? He's ill. He's yeah. sick as a dog oh, for a couple days. Um, if I can play this. I recorded the phone thing. Um, hopefully this will play it. Okay. See if you can hear this. So that's it. There's no doctors you can talk to because it's weekend. Ambulance for a ride. So I guess we can check up on them via phone call. Is the is the bard there? <laughs> And they'll, they'll, they always do the overnight observation thing, so. So we can mm -hmm. call them up and at least we can talk to someone to see, if, you know, or just wait, say a little prayer. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Well, you could send us a notice anyway, when you find out. You know, I was thinking um, how auspicious it was that we were doing Taming of the Shrew because I know that, uh, and Mike would really be able to ex explain more of this, but I think that the, the whole reason for the Shakespeare reading started because, you know, they did a production at Diamond Head of the Taming of the Shrew. Um, and out of that grew the, you know, Shakespeare readings. They just were so excited, and they, you know, it was they were using one of the the first or second folio. It was Randall Kim. I don't know if you know that name. Maybe some yeah, of you. Randall Duck Kim. Yeah. Yeah, very famous from Hawaii, who ran a Shakespeare company in Wisconsin. He came back with his wife, and 
for a couple of years, there was a guy at Diamond Head who really wanted to, you know, do more serious theater or at least more plays. And that resulted in them doing Taming of the Shrew. Mm -hmm. And Jim and uh, Mike were in it and they were just so excited that, you know, they thought, well, well we're just going to keep reading these plays. So I was thinking about that tonight. You know? Okay. And they had the, Jim would uh, relate the early days in the Barnes and Noble. Yeah, well, that's yeah. how it all started, you know. Uh, that's where I started to go. And, um, oh, here's somebody. Sunday night. Mikey. Ruby. Ruby or Mikey. Mikey. Mm. It's Mike B, so it's not Ruby. Uh. There he is. Uh. Connect to audio. Mike, are you connected? I think so. Can you hear me? I can, can hear, hear you. you. Yeah, can't see you. I cannot see you. You can't see me. Oh, okay, my video. Right, right. Oh, uh, yeah. Right. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Yay. My. Yeah, right, right on. Yeah, Has your place gotten smaller, Mike? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think it, it looks like you're up in the space. You know how they talk sideways. <laughs> oh, space station. Oh yeah, they're blasting off now. <laughs> uh oh, there we go. Oh, just. Relaxed lounge, like spacious accommodation. Have to do that. I'm on the device so that I can see the script. Nice. Yeah. Like too far away now? Yeah, but look. Peter, you've got a lot of hats. He does. Oh my God! Look at that. It's amazing. Oh. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> I have an account error. I don't understand what that means. starting um, who is sly okay so um oh jim added a new video on his facebook let's see what this is excuse me it's, i'm one okay no 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 it's one of those you are friends with linda molina linda for a long time one of them things okay i was wondering if you did Okay, uh, you got your scripts and all? Yeah. Yeah. I know I'm playing Batista. I don't remember what else I'm playing. Oh, God. Okay. I think I've lost it. Never mind. Uh, yeah, we're, we're just like everybody here. Um, yeah. In, this is one of, oh, here comes Ruby. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you, Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many shrill voices I could do without looking sound like Monty Python. <laughs> and here comes Bianca. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a Monty Python version of it. You know, we could give it a bit of a go. Yeah. <laughs> Do any kind of version, right? We got yeah. okay. So, so the the play has a a frame called an induction, and it's the story of this nobleman convinces a commoner named Christopher Sly that he is a nobleman, 
And the nobleman's uh, companion, I don't know, servant, I don't know what, named Bartholomew, is dressed up in a, I guess, dress, and is um, playing Sly. He's convincing Sly that Bartholomew is his wife. And, <laughs> of course, Sly is very, very drunk. And that was what Jim was going to play, Sly. And um, once this is all set, and it's for the bemusement of the Lord, once this is all set, then the Lord has a play put on to distract Sly from his wife. Bartholomew in a dress. Um, why that's in there, I don't know. I'm, I didn't ask Will. <laughs> I'm 400 years too late for that. It's a hypnotic induction. Story it's, within a story within a story within a story. Yeah, he's yeah. got the play within a play stuff, yeah? Yeah. So, I guess the audience gets all Oh yeah, this is the action, and Sly's like, yeah, no care about anything, and then all of a sudden, this play, yeah, the Shrew, the Taming of the Shrew, and then he wakes up at the end. And he's like, "Wow, I had quite a dream. You guys would not believe it." Yeah, oh. and, and right. Bartholomew has to walk. Oh, I, I should have spoiled there. it for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, Ruby. Ruby, why can't we see your face? Oh, hold on just a sec. Point it to yeah. the seat. Hold on. <laughs> All right. Video. Okay. Ah. Thank you. All right. Image. <laughs> huh? Image. You're, you're a little bit low. Of, of your head. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we see the top of your head. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> Hold on. Better. There she is. There she is. All right. Okay, so are we reading this first part? I'd imagine. Uh, yeah. You want me to read Jim's part? Um, since he's not here? You can if you want. Jim's like, oh, you can skip it if you want. Last oh. I heard. But. Okay, I'll um, read it. We'll go I'd like to see. Um, I'd like to see Peter. Do the hostess. <laughs> <laughs> I signed up for Lord, so I got that part. Okay, let's, let's this, take it and see what go, Shall we go through the list of our characters we got? Yeah. Okay, Peter, Baptista, Minola, the father of yeah. Katharina and back Bianca. Hmm. Gremio, elderly suitor of Bianca. So you're going after the younger sister. Uh, the widow, not too many lines, and pendant. Yes. For some reason. And and my sound. Oh gosh. Is my sound better? Yes. So, um. Peter, your roles, yeah? Yeah. Uh, Baptista Minola. Uh -huh. okay. Gremio, elder suitor of Bianca. Gremio. Widow. Few words. Win win window? Widow. Yeah, Widow, or Window. Widow. Whichever one you want. Okay. Pendant. 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 Yes, it's like window and pendant. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. And be sure to pick more, because, you know, here we are. Yeah. Okay. Ruby, you there? Yeah. Okay. You are Katharina Minola Zish. Right. And so far, nothing else. Leilani? Oh, okay. No, I was going to say, you could... If you need to fill, have filled in, I can you know, fill in somewhere. Great, yeah. Uh, we're going to have to do that with more than one here. Uh, okay, let's just well, start then. 
figure that out. Okay, Lilani, you're Bianca Manola. Uh, Richard, we got you for Act One, Petruccio, right? Yes. Okay. Anything for a cat? I, you know. <laughs> Keith, Keith he, he said he may be able to stay the entire play. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. Next time we're doing cat. <laughs> Is that what you said? Oh, you'll be thrilled. Did you hear that? Uh, Richard You're said he might be. Richard said he might be able to stay for the whole play. So in that case, he okay. could do for sure. For the whole play, that'd be great. Oh, okay, okay, good. good. That would be wonderful. Yeah. All right. Okay. And then that means everybody else got to grab lots of other stuff. Okay. So yeah. I got um, David. I got you for Lucentio and Grumio. Uh, I hope these don't overlap. They don't. Nathan Nathaniel is servant of Petruccio. Petruccio. <laughs> uh, okay, and and I'm also taking uh, the first serving man. Uh, He's first got 18 man. lines in the in the very uh, induction. Okay, induction. Okay, good, good, good. Ay, 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 ay. Jim was Vicencio. Vicencio. Um. So we'll have to, and Curtis, the servant of Petruccio. And then so far I am Tranio and Joseph, who is a servant to Petruccio and a Lord, which is in the induction. So how about, how about I'll do Vincentio and Curtis, Jim's part, sitting up here. Okay. Slide. He's going to be sly also. Um, Looks good to yeah. me. Okay, let's start. Yeah, okay. Let's start. okay. Are we going to start with the induction scene one? And yes. I'll play the hostess if you want. Oh, we would love that. Okay. I would love it. Okay. <laughs> I'll seize you in faith. What a pretty stocks, you rogue. Yeah, you're a baggage. The slides are no rogues. Look in the chronicles. We came in with Richard Conqueror. Therefore, paucus palabras. Let the world slide. Cesar. <laughs> you will not pay for the glasses you must. No, not a denier. Go by, Geronimo. Go to thy cold bed and warm thee. Well, I know my remedy. I must go fetch the third barrel. Third or fourth or fifth barrel. I'll enter him by law. I'll not budge an inch. Boy, let him come. And kindly. <sighs> Huntsman, I charge thee. Tender well, my hounds. Brock Merriman, the poor cur is embossed. And couple clowder with the deep mouth bark. South the thou not boy how sly sliver made it good at the hedge corner in the coldest fault i would not lose the dog for 20 pound my bellman is as good as he my lord he cried upon it at the merest loss twice today pick it out the dullest scent trust me i take him for the better dog thou art a fool if Echo were as fleet, I would esteem him worth a dozen such. But sup them up well, and look unto them all. Tomorrow I intend to hunt again. I will, my lord. Uh, what's here? One dead or drunk? Uh, see, doth he breathe? He breathes, my lord. Were he not warmed with ale, this were but a bed, but cold to sleep so soundly. Oh, monstrous beast! How like a swine he lies! Grim death, how foul and loathsome, loathsome is thine image! Sirs, I will practice on this drunken man. What you think if he were conveyed to bed? Wrapped in sweet clothes, rings put on his fingers, a most delicious banquet by his bed, and brave attendants near him when he wakes. What would not the beggar then forget himself? Believe me, Lord, I think he cannot choose. 
it would seem strange unto him when he waked. Even as a flattering dream or worthless fancy, then take him up and manage well the jest. Carry him gently to my fairest chamber and hang it around with all my wanton pitchers. Balm his foul head in warm distilled waters and burn sweet wood to make his lodging sweet. Procure me music ready when he wakes to make a dulcet of a, and a heavenly sound. And if he chance to speak, be ready straight and with low submissive reverence say, what is it your honor will command? Let one attend him with a silver basin full of rose water and be strewed with flowers. Another bear the ewer, the third a diaper, and say, will it please your lordship to cool your hands? Some, one, be ready with a costly suit and ask him what apparel he'll wear. Another tell him of his hounds and horse and that his lady mourns at his disease. Persuade him that he hath been lunatic. And when he says he is, say that he dreams, for he is nothing but a mighty lord. This do and do it kindly, gentle sirs. It will be pastime passing excellent, if it be husband with modesty. My lord, I warrant you, we will play our part as he shall think by our true diligence, he's no less than what we say he is. Take him up gently and to bed with him and each one of his offices when he wakes. Sirrah, go see what trumpet tis that sounds. Be like some nobleman that means traveling some journey to repose him here. How now? Who is it? And please, your honor, players, they offer service to your lordship. I bid them come near. Now, fellows, you are welcome. We thank your honor. Do you intend to stay with me tonight? So please, your lordship, to accept our duty. With all my heart. This fellow I remember, since once he played a farmer's eldest son, "'Twas where you wooed the gentleman so well. "'I have forgot your name, but, sir, "'that part was aptly fitted and naturally performed. "'I think twas so to that your honor means. "'It is very true. Thou didst it excellent. "'Well, you are come to me in a happy time, "'the rather for I have some sports in hand, "'wherein your cunning can assist me much. There is a lord will hear you play tonight, but I am doubtful of your modesty, lest over eyeing of this odd behavior. Yet for this honor, never heard a play. You break into some merry passion and so offend him. For I tell you, sirs, if you should smile, he grows impatient. Okay. <coughs> Fear not, my lord. We can contain ourselves. We're he the veriest antic in the world. Uh, no, sirrah. Take them to the buttery and give them friendly welcome, every one, and let them want nothing that is that my house affords. Sirrah, go you to Bartholomew's, my page, and see him dressed in all suits like a lady. That done, conduct him to the drunkard's chamber and call him madam. Do him obscience. Tell him for me that as he will win my love, he bear himself with honorable action. Such as he hath observed in noble ladies unto their lords, by them accomplished. Such duty to the drunkard let him do with soft, low tongue and lowly curtsy, and say, what's your honor will command? Command wherein your lady and your humble wife may show her duty and make known her love. And then with a kind embracements, tempting kisses, and with declining head into his bosom, bid him 
shed tears as being overjoyed to see her noble lord restored to health, who for this seven years has esteemed him no better than a poor and lonesome beggar. And if the boy hath not a woman's gift, to rain a shower of commanding tears, an onion will do well for such a shift, which in which in a napkin being close conveyed shall in despite enforce a watery eye. See this dispatched with all the haste thou canst, and on I'll give thee more instructions. I know the boy will well observe the grace, voice, gait, and action of a gentlewoman. I long to hear him call a, a drunkard husband, and how my men will stay themselves from laughter when they do homage to this simple peasant. May well abate and oh, <clears throat> I'll in to counsel them haply my presence. May well abate the overmerry spleen, which otherwise would grow into extremes. Scene two. Scene two. A bedchamber in the Lord's house. Enter a loft sly with attendants. For uh, God's sake, a small pot of ale. Will it please your lordship drink a cup of sack? Will it please your honor taste of these conserves? Richard, what step in. What it's raiment will your honor wear today? I am Christopher O'Sly. Call me not honor nor lordship. I never drank sack in my life. And if you give me any conserves, give me conserves of beef. <laughs> never ask me what raiment I'll wear, for I have no more doublets than backs, no more stockings than legs, nor no more shoes than feet. <laughs> Nay, sometimes more feet than shoes, or such shoes as my toes look through over the leather. Heavens, <laughs> cease this idle humor in your honor. Oh, that a mighty man of such descent, of such possessions, and so high esteem, should be infused with so foul a spirit. What? Would you make me mad? Am not I Christopher Sly, old Sly's son of Burton Heath, by birth a peddler? By education, a card maker, by transmutation, a bear herd, and now, by present profession, a tinker? Ask Marion Hackett, the fat ale wife of Wincott, if she know me not. If she say I am not fourteen pence on the score for sheer ale, score me up for the lyingest knave in Christendom. <laughs> what? I am not bestraught. His. Oh! This is his that makes your lady mourn. Oh, this is it that makes your servants droop. Hence comes it that your kindred shuns your house, as beaten hence by your strange lunacy. O oh, noble lord, bethink thee of thy birth. Call home thy ancient thoughts from banishment, and banish hence these abject lowly dreams. Look how the servants do attend on thee, each in his office ready at thy beck. Wilt thou have music? Hark! Apollo plays! And, <laughs> and twenty caged nightingales do sing. Or wilt thou sleep? We have thee to a couch, softer and sweeter than the lustful bed, on purpose trimmed up for the seminarist this Semi. <laughs> the seminary. Yes. The yes. seminary. Yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh yes. The seminary. Sage, <laughs> thou wilt walk. We will bestrew the ground. Or wilt thou ride? Thy horses shall be trapped. Their harnesses studded all with gold and pearl. Dost thou love hawking? Thou past hawks will soar above the morning lark or wilt thou hunt thy hounds shall make the welkin answer them and fetch shrill echoes from the hollow earth see thou wilt course thy greyhounds are as swift as bridged stags ah fleeter than the road 
Dost thou love pictures? We will fetch thee straight Adonis painted by a running brook, in Cytheria all in sedges hid, which seemed to move and wanton with her breath, even as the waving sedges play with wind. We'll show thee Io as she is a, was a maid, and how she was beguiled and surprised, as lively painted <laughs> as the deed was done. Or Daphne roaming through a thorny wood, scratching her legs that one shall swear she bleeds, and at that sight shall sad Apollo weep, so workmanly thy blood and tears are drawn. <laughs> Thou art a lord, and nothing but a lord. Thou hast a lady far more beautiful than any woman in this waning age. And till the tears that she hath shed for thee, like envious floods, o'errun her lovely face. She was the fairest creature in the world, and yet she is inferior to none. Am I a lord, and have I such a lady? Or do I dream, or have I dreamed till now? I do not sleep, I see, I hear, I speak. I smell sweet savors, I feel soft things. Upon my life, I am a lord indeed, and not a tinker nor Christopher O'Sly. Well, bring our lady hither to our sight. <laughs> and once again, a pot of the smallest ale. Will it please your mightiness to wash your hands? Oh, how we joy to see your wit restored. Oh, that once more you knew what you, what you are. These 15 years you have been in a dream. Or when you waked, so waked as if you slept. These fifteen years, by my fay, a goodly nap. <laughs> but did I never speak of all that time? Oh, yes, my lord, but very idle words. For though you lay here in this goodly chamber, yet would you say you were beaten out of door <laughs> and, and rail upon the hostess of the house and say you would present her at the leap? because she brought stone jugs and no sealed quartz. Sometimes you would call out for a Sicily hacket. Aye, the woman's maid of the house. Why, sir, you have no house nor such maid, nor such men as you have reckoned up, as Stephen Sly, and did John Knapps of Greece, and Peter Turk, and Henry Pimpernel, ten twenty more such names, and men as these, which we're never, nor no man ever saw. Now, Lord, be thanked for my good amends. Amen. 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 I thank thee, thou shalt not lose by it. How fair is my noble lord? Mary, I farewell, for here is cheer enough. <laughs> Where's my wife? Here, noble lord. What is thy will with her? Are you my wife and will not call me husband? <laughs> my men should call me lord. I am your good man. My husband and my lord. My lord and husband. I am your wife in all obedience. I know it well. What must I call her? Madam. Alice Madam or Joan Madam? <laughs> madam and nothing else. So lords. Uh, madam wife, they say that I have dreamed and slept some fifteen years or more. Aye, and the time seems thirty unto me, being all this time abandoned from your bed. It is much. Servants, leave me and her alone. Madam, undress you and come now to bed. Rice, noble lord, let me entreat of you to pardon me yet for a night or two. Or, if not so, until the sun be set. For your physicians have expressly charged, in peril to incur <laughs> your former malady, that I should yet absent me from your bed. I hope this reason stands for my excuse. Uh, it stands so that I may hardly tarry so long. <laughs> but I would be loath to fall into my dreams again. I will therefore tarry in spite of the flesh and the blood. Your honor's players, heeding your amendment, are come to play a pleasant comedy. 
for so your doctors hold it very meet, seeing too much sadness hath congealed your blood. And melancholy is the nurse of frenzy. Therefore, they thought it good you hear a play and frame your mind to mirth and merriment, which bars a thousand harms and lengthens life. Mary, I will let them play it. Is not a common day a Christmas gambled or a tumbling trick? No, my good lord. It is more pleasing stuff. What? Household stuff? It's a kind of history. Well, we'll see it. Come, madam wife, sit by my side and let the world slip. We shall ne'er be younger. <laughs> Act one. Scene one, Padua, a public place. Tranio, since for the great desire I had to see fair Padua, nursery of arts, I'm arrived for fruitful Lombardy, the pleasant garden of great Italy. And by my father's love and leave, I'm armed with his good will and thy good company, my trusty servant, well approved in all. Here let us breathe and happily institute a course of learning and ingenious studies. Peace of renown for grave citizens gave me my being and my father's first, a merchant of great traffic through the world. Vincenzo come of Ventavoli, Vincenzo's son, brought up in Florence, shall be come to serve all hopes conceived, to deck his fortune with his virtuous deeds. And therefore, Tranio, for the time I study, virtue and that part of philosophy, will I apply the treats of happiness, by virtue specially to be achieved. Tell me thy mind, for I have Pisa left and then to Padua come, as he that leaves a shallow plash to plunge him in the deep and with satiety seeks to quench his thirst. Me perdonato, gentle mastermind. I am an all affected as yourself. Glad that you thus continue your resolve to suck the sweets of sweet philosophy. Only, good master, while you, while we do admire this virtue and this moral discipline, let's be no stoics nor no stocks, I pray. So, or so devote to Aristotle's checks as Ovid be to an outcast quite abjured balk logic with acquaintance that you have in practice rhetoric in your common talk. Music and poesy used to quicken you. The mathematics and the metaphysics fall to them as you find your stomach serve you. No profit grows where is no pleasure taken. In brief, sir, study what you most affect. Gramercy, Estranio, well dost thou advise. If by Indello thou wert come ashore, we could at once put us in readiness, take a lodging, fit to entertain such friends as time and Padua shall beget. But stay a while. What company is this? Master, show some show to welcome us to town. Ah, gentlemen, they will draw me no farther. See how firmly I am resolved, you know, that is not to bestow my youngest daughter, who before I have husband, husband for the elder. If either of you know, both love Katharina, because I know you well, and love you well, leave shall you have to court her at your pleasure. <laughs> to court her father, rather, she's too rough for me. There, there, Hortensio, will you any wife? I pray you, sir, is it your will to make a stale of me amongst these mates? Mates, oh. maid, how mean you that? No mates for you unless you were of a gentler, milder mold. I faith, sir, you shall never need fear. It is, it is not halfway to her heart, but if it were, doubt not her care should be to comb your noodle with a three-legged stall and paint your face and use you like a fool. From all such devils, good Lord, deliver us. And me too, good Lord. Hush, master. 
Here's some good pastime toward that rent wench is stark mad or wonderful forward. But in the other silence, do I see maids mild behavior and sobriety? Peace, Tranio. Well said, Master. Mum, and gaze your fill. Uh, gentlemen, that I may soon make good what you what I have said. Bianca, get you in. And uh, let it not uh, displease thee, good Bianca, for I will have thee there the less, my girl. A pretty Pete in his best put finger in the eye, and she knew why. Sister, content you in my discontent? Sir, to your pleasure, I humbly I subscribe. My books and instruments shall be my company, on them to, to look and practice by myself. Hark, Tranio! Thou mayest hear Minerva speak. Signor Baptista, will you be so strange? Sorry am I that our good will affects Bianca's grief. Why will you mew her up, Signor Baptista, for this fiend of hell, and make her bear the penance of her tongue? Uh, gentlemen, I content you. I am resolved. Uh, go to, Bianca. And now, and for I know she taketh the most delight in music, instruments, and poetry. Schoolmasters will I keep within my house, uh, fit to instruct her youth. If you, Hortensio, or Signor Gremio, you know any such, uh, prefer them hither, uh, for it is to uh, cunning men. Um, uh, I will be very kind and liberal to mine own children in good bringing up, uh, and so farewell. Katharina, uh, you may stay. For I have more to commune with Bianca. Why? And I trust I may go too. May I not? What? Shall I be appointed ours as though be like I knew not what to take and what to leave? You may go to the devil's dam. Your gifts are so good. Here's none will hold you. Their love is not so great, Hortensio, but we may blow our nails together and fast it fairly out. Our cakes do on both sides. Farewell, yet for the love I bear my sweet Bianca, if I can by any means light on a fit man to teach her that wherein she delights, I will wish him to her father. So will I, Signor Grimio, but a word I pray. Though the nature of our quarrel yet never brooked parley, know now upon advice it touches us both that we may yet again have access to our fair mistress and be happy rivals in Bianca's love to labor and effect one thing especially. What's that, I pray, Mary, sir? To get a husband for her sister. A husband? A devil! <laughs> I say a husband. Oh, I say a devil. Yes, yeah. now, Hortensio, uh, though but her father be very rich, any man is so very a uh, fool to be married to hell. Tush, Grimio, though it pass your patience and mine to endure her loud alarms, why? Man, there be good fellows in the world, and a man could light on them, would take her with all faults and money enough. Why, well, I cannot tell, but I have a leave take her a dowry with this con condition, to be whipped at the high uh, cross every morning. Hey, as you say, there's small choice in rotten apples, but come, since this bar in law makes us friends, it shall be so far forth friendly maintained all by helping baptista's eldest daughter to a husband we set his youngest free for husband and then have to it afresh sweet bianca happy man be his dole he that runs fast to sketch the ring how say you senor gremio i'm agreed and what i had given him she had best the uh, best horse in padua to begin his wooing that would thoroughly woo her wed her and bed her, and <laughs> rid the house of her. Come on! <laughs> I pray, sir, tell me, is it possible that love should of a sudden take such hold? Oh, oh Tranio, I found it to be true. I never thought it possible or likely. But see, while idly I stood, look, stood looking on, I found the effect of love and idleness. And now in plainness do confess to thee that art to me as secret and as dear as honor to the Queen of Carthage was. 
Tranio, I burn, I pine, I perish, Tranio. If I achieve not this young modest girl, counsel me, Tranio, for I know thou canst. Assist me, Tranio, for I know thou wilt. Master, it is no time to chide you now. Affection is not rated from the heart. If love hath touched you, naught remains but so. Redine de captum quam quis minimal. <laughs> Sorry. <That's funny. laughs> Gramercy's lad, go forward. This contents, the rest will comfort for the council's sound. Master, you looked so longingly on the maid. Perhaps you mark not what the pith of it all. Oh, yes, I saw sweet beauty in her face, such as the daughter of Agenor had, that made great Jove to humble him to her hand, when with his knees he kissed the Cretan strand. Saw you no more? Marked you not how her sister began to scold and raise up such a storm that mortal ears might hardly endure the din? Honey, I saw her coral lips to move, and with her breath she did perfume the air. Sacred and sweet was all I saw in her. Nay, then, tis time to stir him from his trance, I pray. Awake, sir! If you love the maid, bend thoughts and wit to achieve her. Thus it stands. Her eldest sister is so cursed and shrewd that till the father is rid his hands of her. Master, your love must live a maid at home. And therefore has he closely mooed her up because she will not be annoyed with suitors. Ah, Tranio, what a Fool father is he, but art thou not advised? He took some care to get her cunning schoolmasters to instruct her. I, Mary, am I, sir, and now tis plotted. I have it, Tranio. Master, for my hand, both our inventions meet and jump in one. Tell me thine first. You will be schoolmaster and undertake the teaching of the maid. That's your device. It is. May it be done? Not possible. For who shall bear your part and be in Padua here, Vicentio's son, keep house and ply his book, welcome his friends, visit his countrymen and banquet them? Basta. Content thee, for I had it full. We have not yet been seen in any house nor can we lie distinguished by our faces for man or master. And it follows thus. Thou shalt be master, Tranio, in my stead. Keep house and port and servants as I should. I will some other be, some Florentine, some Neapolitan or meaner man of Pisa. Tis hatchet and shall be so. Tranio, at once, uncase thee. Take my colored hat and cloak. When Biondello comes, he awaits on thee. But I will charm him first to keep his tongue. So had you need. In brief, sir, sith it your pleasure is, and I am tied to be obedient, for so your father charged me at his at all parting. Be serviceable to my son, quoth he. Although I think twas in another sense, I'm content, I'm content to be Lucentio, because so well I love Lucentio. Tranio, be so, because Lucentio loves. And let me be a slave to achieve that maid whose sudden sight hath thrilled my wounded eye. Here comes the rogue. Sirrah, where have you been? Yep. Where have I been? Nay, how now? Where are you? Master, has my uh, fellow uh, Tranio stolen your clothes? And you stolen his? Uh, or both? Pray, what's the news? Sirrah, come hither. Tis no time to jest. Therefore, frame your manners to the tongue. Your fellow Tranio here, to save my life, puts my apparel and my countenance on, and I, for my escape, have put on his. 
We're going to quarrel. Since I came ashore, I killed a man in fear I was described. Wait you on him, I charge you, as becomes, while I make way from hence to save my life. You understand me? I said, uh, never, never wit. <laughs> <laughs> Not a jot of tranio in your mouth. Tranio is changed into lucentia. Oh, the better for him. Will I do were to so too? So could I, Faith. Boy, to have the next wish after, that Lucencio indeed has Baptista's youngest daughter. But, Sarah, not for my sake, but your master's. I advise you use your manners discreetly in all kind of companies. When I am alone, why, then I am Tranio. But in all places else, your master, Lucentio. Tyrannio, let's go. One thing more rest that thyself execute to make one among these wooers. If thou ask me why, suffereth it, my reasons are both good and weighty. My lord, you nod, you do not mind the play. Yes, by Saint Anne, do I a good matter, surely. Comes there more of it? My lord, tis but begun. Ah, tis a very excellent piece of work, madam lady, would to have done. Scene two. See. Verona, for a while I take my leave to see my friends in Padua. My best beloved and approved friend, Hortensio, and I troll, this is his house. Here, Sarah, Romeo, knock, I say. Knock, sir? Whom should I knock? Is there man has rebused your worship? Then, I say, knock me here soundly. Knock you here, sir? Why, sir? What am I, sir, that I should knock you here, sir? Villain, I say, knock me at this gate, and wrap me well, or I'll knock your knave's pate. My master has grown quarrelsome. I should knock you first, and then I know after who comes by the horse. Will it not be? Faith, sirrah, and you'll not knock. I'll ring it. I'll try how you can so far and sing it. Help, masters, help. My master is mad. Now, knock when I bid you, sir, our villain. How oh, now? What's the matter? My old friend, Grumio, and my good friend, Petruchio. How do you all at Verona? Signor Tensio, come you to part the fray? Con tutto il cuore ben trovato, may I say? Al nostra casa ben ranuto, molto honorato, signor mio, Petruchio. Rise, Grumio, rise. We will compound this quarrel. Hey, tis no matter, sir, what he legis in Latin. But if this be not a lawful case for me to leave his service, look you, sir. He bid me knock him and wrap him soundly, sir. Well, was it fit for a servant to use his master so, being perhaps for what I see, two and a thirty, a pip out? Whom would to God I had well knocked at first, then had not Grumio come by the worst? A senseless villain. Good Hortensio, I bade the rascal knock upon your gate, and could not get him for my heart to do it. Knock at the gate? Oh, oh heavens! Spake you not these words, plain? Sirrah, knock me here, wrap me here, knock me well, knock me soundly. And come you now with knocking at the gate. Sirrah, be gone or talk not, I advise you. Petruchio, patience. I am Grumio's pledge. Why, this is a heavy chance twixt him and you, your ancient, trusty, pleasant servant Grumio. And tell me now, sweet friend, what happy gale blows you to Padua here from old Verona? Such winds as scatter young men through the world to seek their fortunes farther than at home, where small experience grows. But in a few, Signor Hortensio, thus it stands with me. Antonio, my father, is deceased, and I have thrust myself into this maze, happily to wive and thrive as best I may. 
crowns in my purse, I have in goods at homes, and so am come abroad to see the world. Drukio, shall I then come roundly to thee and wish thee to a shrewd, ill-favored wife? Thou'lt thank me but little for my counsel, yet I'll promise thee she shall be rich and very rich. But thou art too much, my friend. I'll not wish thee to her. Signor Hortensio, twixt such friends as we, few words suffice, and therefore, if thou know one rich enough to be Petruchio's wife, as wealth is burden of my wooing dance, but she as foul as was Florentine's love, as old as Sibyl and as cursed and shrewd as Socrates Xanthipi, or worse, she moves me not, or not removes at least affection's edges in me, were she as rough as are the swelling Adriatic seas, I come to wive in wealthy Padua, if wealthy, then happily in Padua. Nay, look you, sir, he tells you flatly what his mind is. Why give him gold enough to marry him to a puppet or an aglet baby or an old trot with ne'er a tooth in her head, though she have as many diseases as two and fifty horses? Why, nothing comes amiss. So money comes with all. Petruchio, since we have stepped thus far in, I will continue that I broached in jest. I can, Petruchio, help thee to a wife with wealth enough and young and beauteous, brought up as best becomes a gentlewoman. Her only fault, and that is false enough, is that she is intolerable cursed and shrewd and fraud so beyond all measure that were my state far worse than it is, I would not wed her for a mine of gold. Potentia peace, thou knowest not gold's effect. Tell me her father's name and tis enough, for I will board her though she chide so loud as thunder or the clouds in autumn crack. Her father is Baptista Minola, an affable and courteous gentleman, her name is Katharina Minola, renowned in Padua for her scolding tongue. I know her father, though I know not her, and he knew my deceased father well. I will not sleep, Hortensio, till I see her, and therefore let me be thus bold with you to give you over at this first encounter, unless she will accompany me thither. I pray you, sir, let him go while the humor lasts. Oh, my lord, and she knew him as well as I do. She would think scolding would do little good upon him. She may perhaps call him half a score knaves or so. Why, that's nothing. And he'd begin once, he'll rail in his rope tricks. I'll tell you what, sir, and she stand him but a little, he will throw a figure in her face and so disfigure her with it that she shall have no more eyes to see with all than a cat. You know him not, sir. Sorry, Petruchio, I must go with thee, for in Baptista's keep my treasure is. He hath the jewel of my life in hold, his youngest daughter, beautiful Bianca, and her withholds from me and other more suitors for her, rivals in my love, supposing it a thing impossible for those defects I have before rehearsed that ever Katharina will be wooed, therefore, this order hath Baptista Tim, that none shall have access unto Bianca until Katharina the Cursed have got a husband. Katharina the Cursed, a title for a maid of all titles the worst. Now shall my friend Petruchio do me grace and offer me disguise in sober robes to old Baptista as a schoolmaster well seen in music to instruct Bianca so that I may, by this device, at least have leave and leisure to make love to her and, unsuspected, court her by myself. Here's no knavery. See to beguile the old folks, how the young folks lay their heads together. Master, master, look about you. Who goes there, huh? Peace, Grumio. It is the rival of my love. Petruchio, stand by a while proper stripling and an amorous. Oh, very well, uh, 
I have per <laughs> I have perused the note. Uh, hark you, sir. I will have them very uh, fairly be uh, bound. All books of love, uh, see that it may uh, at my hand at any hand, and you read a, uh, or rather, I need bigger print, or rather, uh, hectares to her. Uh, lectures. You, uh, you understand. You understand me. Is uh, over and beside the senior Batista's li liberality. I'll need it with a largesse. Take your paper too, paper too, and uh, let me have uh, very well, well performed. For she is sweeter than perfume itself. To whom they go to. What will you read to her? Whatever I read to her, I'll plead for you. As for my patron, stand you so assured, as firmly as yourself, we're still in my place. Yet, hey, and perhaps with more successful words than you, unless you were a scholar, sir. Oh, oh thou got learning. What a thing is this. Oh, this woodchuck, what an ass it is. Peace, sirrah. Romeo, mum, God save you, Senor Gremio. And you, uh, you are uh, well met, uh, Signor Hortensio. Show me whither I am going. I am uh, to Battista Minola. I am uh, promised uh, to inquire carefully about a schoolmaster for the fair Bianca. And by good fortune, I have uh, lighted well uh, on this uh, young man for learning and behavior, uh, fit for her turn, well read in poetry and other books and good ones, I warrant you. Tis well, and I have met a gentleman that promised me to help me to another, a fine musician to instruct our mistress. So shall I no wit be behind in duty to fair Bianca, so beloved of me. Beloved of me, and uh, that uh, my deed shall prove. And that his bag shall prove. Gremio, it is now no time to vent our love. Listen to me. And if you speak me fair, I'll tell you news indifferent, good for either. Here is a gentleman whom by chance I met, upon agreement from us to his liking, will undertake to woo cursed Katharina, hey, and to marry her if her dowry please. So said, so said, so done, it is well. Uh, Hortensio, have you told them all uh, her fault? I know she is an irksome, brawling scold. Is that be all, masters? I hear no harm. No, no, says me so, friend. Uh, what uh, countryman? Born in Verona, old ah. Antonio's son. My father's dead, my fortune lives for me, and I do hope good days and long to see. Oh, sir, such a life with such a wife were, <laughs> were strange. But if you have a stomach uh, to the God's name, uh, you shall have me uh, assisting you in all, uh, but will you woo this wild cat? Will I live? Will he woo her? Aye, or I'll hang her. But why came I hither but to that intent? Think you a little din can daunt my ears? Have I not in my time heard lions roars? Have I not heard the sea puffed up with winds, rage like an angry boar chafed with sweat? Have I heard not heard great ordnance in the field, and heaven's artillery thunder in the skies? Have I not in a pitched battle heard Lord Larum's neighing steeds and trumpets clang? And do you tell me of a woman's tongue that gives not half so great a blow to hear as will a chestnut in a farm's fire tush tush fear boys with hugs? For he fears none. What a tale, hark! Uh, this gentleman is ha happily arrived, my mind uh, presumes, for his old goodwill. And I promise we would be contributors and bear his charge of wooing whatsoever. And so we will, provided that he uh, win her. I would, I were, as sure of a good dinner. Uh, gentlemen, God save you. May I be bold? Tell me, I beseech you, which is the readiest way to the house of Signor Baptista Minola? Peter, that's uh, two fair daughters, is uh, that you mean? Even he, Biandello. Parker, sir, you mean uh, not to her, to... Uh... Perhaps him and her, sir. What have you to do? Uh, uh not 
prefer the chides, sir, at my hand, I pray. I love no chiders, sir. Biondello, let's away. Help me, gun child. Sir, a word ere you go. Are you a suitor to the maid you talk of, yea or no? And if I be, sir, is it any offense? No. If it's without uh, mere words, more words, you will get a uh, hand. Why, sir, I pray, are not the streets as free for me as for you? But so is not she. For what reason, I beseech you? For this reason, if you'll know, that she's the choice love of Signor Gremio. That she's the chosen of Signor Hortensio. Oh, softly, my masters. If you be gentlemen, do me this right. Hear me with patience. Baptista is a noble gentleman, to whom my father is not all unknown. And were his daughter <clears throat> fairer than she is, she may more suitors have than me for one. Fair Leda's daughter and a thousand wooers. Then, well, one more may fair Bianca have, and so she shall. Lucentio shall make one, through Paris came in hope, to speed alone. What? Well, this gentleman will out talk us all. Sir, give him a hand. I know he'll prove a jade. Hortensio, to what end are all these words? Sir, let me be so bold as to ask you, did you ever yet see Baptista's daughter? No, sir. But I hear do hath he hath too. The one is famous as for scolding tongue, as is the other for beauteous modesty. Sir, sir, the first for me, let her go by. Yea, let her labor to the great Hercules, and let it be more than Alcides both. Sir, understand you this of me in sooth? The youngest daughter whom you hearken for her father keeps from all access of suitors, and will not promise her to any man until the elder sister first be wed. The younger you then is free and not before. If it be so, sir, that you are the man, must feed us all, and me amongst the rest. And if you break the ice and do this feat, achieve the elder, set the younger free, for our access, whose hap shall be to have her, will not so graceless be to be ingrate? Sir, you say well, and well you do conceive, and since you do profess to be a suitor, you must, as we do, gratify this gentleman to whom we all rest generally beholding. Sir, I do not be slack. In sign whereof, please ye we may contrive this afternoon, and quaff carouses to our mistress's help, and do as adversaries do in law, strive mightily, but eat and drink as friends. Oh, excellent motion. Fellows, let's be gone. The motion's good indeed, and be it so. Petruchio, I should be your benvenuto. No, I am not a good. Whatever that is. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.